Hey everybody, Matt Pridham here from Web Diligence. Welcome to another iSnipe video tutorial. Today we're going to go over just the basics. Uh, we're going to talk about all the, the different fields on the home screen here. And uh, we'll do a compute and talk about uh, all of the fields that show up on that side. And that'll be that. So up at the top here we've got our, our round section. This is where we describe our ammo. Uh, and the first uh, first field here is ammo name. Uh, what you enter here does not matter. This is just uh, for your own organizational sake. The next one is the caliber of your rifle. Uh, again, this is uh, not used in our computations at the moment. Um, uh, caliber is, is uh, not significant uh, in the actual uh, computation. It is used when calculating the ballistic coefficient, however, uh, so it does get uh, brought in uh, to your calculations, but uh, we save this for, for your sake again. Uh, next one is bullet weight. Uh, of course, uh, this is the weight of the actual projectile, not uh, the whole ammo itself. And um, this is typically described in grains, uh, but if you're uh, elsewhere and they describe it in grams or milligrams, you can go ahead and change the units on that. Uh, the next one is the ballistic coefficient, and this is typically something that uh, you will get from the ammo manufacturer or from the bullet manufacturer. Uh, though we do recommend calculating your own if you do have the ability to uh, chronograph a bullet at a couple of different distances. Uh, you can always uh, calculate your own ballistic coefficients. Uh, there are plenty of tools online to do that. We recommend JBM. Uh, he's got a bunch of uh, good tools over there. Again, we can enter the ballistic coefficient in uh, the G1 um, ballistic, uh, rather drag model, uh, or we can choose from the other G units. The next one on the list is the muzzle velocity, and this is uh, the speed of the bullet as it leaves your barrel. And uh, again, this is uh, typically written on the ammo, but uh, we do recommend that you, um, you chronograph this value uh, if you have the option to. And that kind of um, rounds out the round section, no pun intended. So let's move on to the firearm section. And that's uh, just what it is. Uh, we're going to uh, describe the firearm here. Again, uh, our description or name at the top here is uh, for your benefit, so that when you're saving and loading, you, you know which ones you are saving and loading. Uh, the zero distance. This is the distance at which you sighted in your rifle or zeroed your rifle uh, on day one when you first went to the range. Um, you can go ahead and enter this uh, value in uh, whatever units you like. And that's pretty self-explanatory. And the next one is the sight height. And this is the um, uh, distance above the center of your barrel. Uh, to the center of your sights. So if you're using a, a telescopic or a scope, for example, uh, you would measure from the middle of your barrel right to the very middle of your scope. Um, and this, this uh, isn't a very precise, doesn't need to be a very precise number. Um, measuring with a ruler is, is certainly um, uh, precise enough. Uh, the next two will describe the, the, the site that you're using, um, and these are the click values, or, or how much your site moves for every time you click your sights. Uh, a lot of them are set up with a quarter minute of angle, or 0.25 minutes of angle. Um, but we can go in here and choose from a, a bunch of different presets. Uh, if you happen to have um, a mill, uh, mill scope, um, you can change it to mills, which is, of course, uh, mill radians or MRADs. Um, and then, of course, there are some that describe it in uh, centimeters at 100 meters or inch per 100 yards. Um, we do have that option as well. And uh, if you want to go ahead and, and calibrate your own scope and find out just exactly how many minutes of angle a click is, uh, you can enter in the exact value here as well. Um, the scope we're using today is going to be a quarter minute of angle, so we'll keep it at uh, 0.25. And the last one in the firearm section here is the zero conditions. <clears throat> and uh, these are the atmospheric conditions under which you zeroed or sighted in your rifle. Uh, we can um, we can get them from the internet. Uh, if you're sighting in today, you can always go in here and, and get your, um, your current conditions and uh, apply them. Um, or we can choose to leave it blank if, uh, if you're not sure what the conditions were and uh, you just choose to do a, a blank computation, you can always leave that unfilled. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next one, uh, the range section, and this will be the shooting range or the uh, the area that you're currently shooting. The uh, the first one is a range name again, uh, just for for your benefit. Uh, the next one is the angle to target. Now, if you know what the angle is, you're welcome to enter it here. Uh, the other way to do it is uh, just click that line and we come in here. Now, unfortunately, I'm on a simulator here, so you won't see the little bullet move up and down like a uh, bubble compass would. Uh, but on your device, as you use this, uh, it will measure the angle and you'll notice the number up here change as, as you tilt up and down. Uh, and uh, essentially, you can just, uh, you know, holding, holding the device as if it were uh, a firearm, you can point at your target, kind of looking uh, straight down the top of the screen. Uh, if your barrel happens to be cool, you can set the iPhone right on the top of your barrel and aim your gun at the target and uh, just hold still for a moment or two and uh, the value will get held in there and we can go back and uh, it will keep that value for you. Uh, the next uh, item is the max range. This is the um, furthest most point that iSnipe will calculate for you. If you want to calculate out past 2,000 rounds, just uh, go ahead and enter whatever you like in here. Uh, for example, we could uh, put in 10,000 rounds or 10,000 yards or whatever you like. Um, let's do 5,000 just, uh, just for fun. And then the next one is the step size, or the increments in which iSnipe will tell you all the way out to 5,000 yards. So right now it will tell you 10, 20, 30, and so on. Uh, but you can always change this to just one yard if you want, if you want it to tell you every yard, or just 100 yards if you want a um, quick, uh, you know, a, a quick calculation. Totally up to you. And then the last section down here is the daily variables. Uh, and this will be the weather for today as you're shooting. Um, pretty self-explanatory again. We can uh, click the button here to uh, have a look at the current daily variables and apply them or not. Uh, the button next to it will uh, just download uh, what we just saw into this uh, text box without uh, going to look. So uh, I can do that now and you'll see uh, it throws it in there quickly. And then uh, if you just want to do uh, what I would call a vanilla calculation or, or something that doesn't use weather at all, uh, you can always just click this button and it turns off your daily variables uh, completely. Um, you can notice we'll, we'll hit compute here and we'll see we've got no wind being generated. If we turn this back on, we have wind values. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what those three buttons there do. So just through the, the daily variables, we've got the wind velocity. Of course, this is the speed of the wind, um, either uh, measured with a, a little hand uh, hand meter or um, just using the weather well, online weather service for your area. Uh, the wind angle, uh, again, we can um, enter it if, if we know it, uh, or we can actually go into the screen and, and pointing your device in the direction of the um, uh, of the target, uh, just simply rotate uh, the wheel around showing which direction the wind is blowing and, uh, and we'll leave it there and, and iSnipe remembers. Altitude of course is your current altitude that you're shooting at. Um, this uh, of course will be uh, read from your device uh, using uh, either of these two buttons up here. Something to keep in mind is that GPS devices are not all that great at uh, estimating altitude uh, from the way that they work. So uh, it may be a little bit out. Um, thankfully, altitude is not something that affects the uh, shooting trajectory all that much should you be out a, a couple hundred feet. If you're out a couple thousand, of course, that's, that's going to be a different story, but uh, a GPS should be better than that. And then we've got the temperature, uh, current temperature outside. Uh, again, this uh, using these two buttons up here, this will come from uh, a weather service. Uh, if you happen to have a more accurate value than that, uh, feel free to enter it there. And then the atmospheric pressure, uh, which again can be entered in a bunch of different uh, units. Uh, if you're not used to inches of mercury, feel free to use PSI or, or kilopascals. And then the humidity out, uh, current uh, humidity. And those are all the boxes on the main screen. Um, so we can uh, just go ahead and click Compute, and I'll take you through a quick description of our output uh, screen. So the first thing to mention here is that uh, we're, we're counting in 100-yard increments, which is what we set uh, just a moment ago. 
and it's going to count all the way down to 5,000 yards. Uh, if we want, we can go and uh, set this step size back to 10, and that will give us a, a much more detailed um, a description of, of this trajectory. Again, uh, counting in 10 yard increments all the way down to uh, 5,000, which was, of course, our, um, our max range that we set. Now, a nice little handy trick that a lot of iPhone users don't know is anytime you're at the bottom of a big list like this and you want to get to the top, uh, you can always just click up near the time here, and it'll scroll you right back to the top, and that works in all your apps, um, Safari, what have you. Just a little trick I like to use. Okay, so along the top here, we've got uh, the range, uh, which is in yards, but we can change these units, uh, which we will go into in a further video. And uh, of course, this is just the the distance that your um, your your bullet has traveled as far as uh, from you to to the target zone. The next column here is the path of the bullet, and uh, with iSnipe, we describe the path of the bullet based on uh, deviation from your zero range. Uh, if, you're, if your bullet is uh, set up to uh, strike your target at the bullseye at 100 yards, uh, then we're telling you the, the distance that your bullet has moved from that particular path. You'll notice at uh, 10 yards, we're about 1.1 inches low from the target as it travels up to our, uh, our zero range and then back down. Uh, the next column is the uh, elevation uh, described in uh, angled units, so in this case we're using minutes of angle, uh, and this will be the amount that you need to dial into your scope in order to correct for each of these uh, distances. In, uh, in actual minutes of angle, if we want to find out uh, how many clicks it requires to get there, uh, we can uh, go into each of these, these, uh, these rows here and get more info, which we'll do in just one second here. The next column is uh, wind drift. So again, the actual amount of inches that your uh, bullet has drifted starting at your barrel and moving out from there. Uh, positive values will be to the right, negative values to the left, uh, so we've got a wind blowing our, our bullet a little bit to the right here. Uh, the next column to that is the windage, or the angle measurement of uh, how far the bullet has moved uh, left to right. Uh, again, in this case we're using minutes of angle, and uh, describing it uh, in minutes of angle, not, not in uh, clicks per se. And then the last three here, uh, velocity, energy, and time. Uh, velocity, of course, is the speed of your bullet, uh, starting from the muzzle and uh, slowly going down from there. The energy is the amount of energy left with your bullet uh, at any given distance. And then the time it takes to strike any of these distances. Uh, if we go right down to 5,000, uh, let's, let's have a quick look here. Shooting a 308, you're looking at a 20 second strike time. <laughs> That's crazy. Alright, so as I said, uh, we can click on any of these rows uh, to get a, a more detailed view, uh, something we'll look at further in a, in a next video, but we'll just quickly um, click one here, for example, uh, 60 yards, which is a, a 0 .2, uh, 0 0.3 minute of angle um, a drift. So it will give us a, a good range picture, and uh, down at the bottom here we can go ahead and click to see clicks, and uh, we're 1.2 clicks to the left in order to make up for that, uh, that wind that's pushing us to the right. Alright, so uh, that's about it for the basics. I don't want to get uh, too far into that. Uh, we'll delve deeper into each of these items in further videos, and uh, hopefully I will answer any questions you might have at this point. See you at the next one.